All right, I think this is live. Let's see. Here we go. I'm just going to settle in here and make sure all the technology is working. I'm on my, my own tech today. Here. All right. If you're seeing me, happy Sunday. I'm just going to take a moment to let people settle in. So we'll be starting in about three minutes' time. So if you're already here and are hearing me, some of your uh, supplies or props that you might bring to class today might be a stretchy band and a strap. And you might have our yoga block or a blanket or a towel. You also might have something for you to sit on. To sit on. I don't know why this isn't showing me that I'm on live here. Not sure. So let's just see. Just want to make sure I'm actually working. So let's see here. Just me on my phone. Looks like I'm live. Looks like my microphone is working. Let's just, there we go. All right. All right, so we're technically live and it's 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. All right. So let's take a moment as we come into the practice today. Now we could start on a slightly different. So we've been doing a lot of footwork, which I highly recommend doing it every day, especially if you have balance issues or neuropathy in the feet, or I would say for everybody, some gentle fascial movement at the bottom of the foot. There are other practices that we can do to help with the connective tissue in the body. Massage is great. Um, gentle movement is great. Think of fascia as this connected web of tissue that's everywhere in the body. And what's amazing about it is it sort of separates muscle groups, but then it attaches them. So it's, it's a separator and a connector, and it's a container for the body. And it really provides the, the, the structure of our posture. So there are ways that we can allow this fascial layer to stay hydrated and movable. So it's really a fluid-like layer in the body that's meshy and stringy, and it's meant to move. If we have an injury, or just the natural process of aging is the fascia gets a bit dried out. The other thing that it kind of gets stiff and dried out from is lack of movement. So today's practice is really about finding ways to nourish the connective tissue. When you roll the bottom of the foot, you start to nourish that fascia that works all the way up the back line. But I thought today we could start with a gentle tapping practice to create a little bit of whole body awareness in the fascial layers, and then start with a little breathing exploration. So within your comfort here, we're going to take a moment to just tap on the body. So you take your open palms here. You're sitting maybe at the edge of the chair so that your feet can be flat on the floor. You sit up tall. I'm going to start with my open palms. And I'm just going to start tapping on the body. You might tap on the bottom of the legs here. You might get the back of the calf muscle. You avoid the, the, the bony bits like the knee joint itself. You might get into the size of the thighs or the little fleshy bits here. If you have an actual injury somewhere, avoid that area. Just the, the areas of the body where this feels comfortable for you to do. Okay. Very good. So you might even come up to the sides of the waist gently, come up to the rib cage, and then see if you can take one or two fingertips and just very lightly tap. That's kind of how the woodpecker tapping on the breast, the chest area here. It's right below here is where the thymus gland resides. So it's starting to awaken the immune function for this area of the body. So you can get into the shoulder a little bit, taking one arm over and tapping on the arm. Okay. Under the arm. Others. So this is also a way to create or invite in some embodiment, some awareness of the whole body. 
And the last thing you can do here, which might be helpful for tension that we hold in the face, is to take one finger, I take just one of my middle fingers, and very lightly just tapping on the forehead. You might even close your eyes as you do this. Just knowing that in this practice, anything you choose to leave out is fine. You can always just sit back and observe. Do less or do something that feels a little, maybe slightly different. Yeah, so when you're ready, we'll go back to the thighs and we'll just give them a little more assertive tapping here. Sides of the thighs. So, and then as you slow it down, very good. I encourage you to either let the eyes lower, maybe looking down at the floor, or if it's comfortable for you, maybe the eyes could be closed for a moment. And I'm going to encourage you to take three deep breaths in with a deep exhalation, maybe even with a little bit of sound. So take a deep breath in, big sigh, maybe releasing all your tension from the week. Try that two more times. Think of the breath expanding the inner body as you breathe in. Big sigh. Ah. Okay, they're being soft now. Try one more time like that at your own pace. Big breath in. Big sigh. Ah. You might choose to stay with your eyes closed for a moment. I'm just going to invite you to take a moment to check in with your physical body here. So you might start with a little scan of the body, just noticing what kind of sensations are present for you this morning. And start to notice your breath as it comes in and out without trying to change it or control it. This breath has been with you every day of your life. First thing we brought you into the world, and the last thing we do is we leave the world. It's the breath. And on average, everybody breathes on average, depending on your breath rate, about 20,000 times every single day. So the first part of deepening your practice in yoga is to just start to be aware of your breathing. So just see if you can imagine your breath in is expanding your inner body, creating spaciousness in the inner body. And then with your exhale, is this sort of softening of the outer layers, this letting go, this gathering back towards your center. Letting the belly expand if you can, maybe the rib cage, maybe the upper chest. The exhale, noticing how maybe the body can soften and relax a little bit more. And if it's appropriate and available to you, see how it would feel to take a few breaths focusing on just breathing in the nose and out the nose. If this does not feel comfortable for you today, go back to something that you're comfortable with, which is always an important idea around breathing practices is to explore them within a range that's comfortable for you. So just see if you kept your lips together with a little space for your back teeth. Could you focus on just the sensation of the breath coming in the nose and out the nose? This is not comfortable for you throughout the practice. Please feel free to breathe in the nose, out the nose. There is some benefits to breathing nasal breathing. In general, the exhalation through the mouth with a sigh breath is done kind of once in a while through a breath, breath practice or a moving practice to kind of let the body ease, maybe get a little bit of the carbon dioxide out of the lungs. Generally speaking, after a few sigh breaths, you're exhaling through the mouth. If it's available, breathing in the nose and out the nose gives us a little bit more oxygen with each breath. So when you exhale through the nose, you pick up oxygen on the way out. And the olfactory bulb in the base of the nasal passage can
connect into this center of the brain for memory and cognition. Interesting. Hmm. Great. So that idea of the body expanding as you breathe in, maybe your belly expands, maybe your ribs. And we exhale this idea of the belly gathering back towards your center. start with our movement practice now. So if your eyes are closed, I invite you to open them. And let's just start with the shoulders. So let's try a shoulder roll. So just see if you can slide your shoulders a bit forward and up towards your ears, a little bit back towards the back of your chair, and just gently down towards your seat. It does not have to be a large motion. If there's some restriction in the shoulder, just see if you can find a smaller Shoulders rolling up, back, down. And once you have the movement, you can go back to your breath and notice. Just taking some deep breaths here. In and out. Let's try one more. We can do a tension release exercise. Usually these are done with an exhale through the mouth. And so with the shoulders, if we bring them up to the ears, sort of tensing them up, big breath, out the mouth, and keep the shoulders soft and relaxed. Okay, try two more. Just letting your day and your week go for this little bit of time. Elbows are the shoulders are relaxed, bring the elbows close to the body, palms up here, and encourage the shoulders to slide down and under. Now, from this position, I'm going to take my hands right back to the thighs, avoid the knee joint. So, it's not very stable, but your leg bone is very stable. So, you can press into that leg bone to create a little bit of um, support for the lower back. So, the heel of the hand pressing into the strong leg bone. Again, avoid pressing right on the knee, so mid-thigh or closer to the actual body. So as I sit up tall, I'm sitting a bit at the edge of the chair, so I always kind of show people this. Before you begin, I've got a blanket. For me, I like my pelvis to slightly tilt forward. Very common, especially um, if you sit a lot, is that if I sit just fully on the chair, the pelvis kind of wants to tuck under. It makes it really hard for uh, the breathing to sort of function ideally. And it makes it really hard to sit up tall, which is kind of always want to roll backwards. So if I take the blanket, instead of having it right at the edge of the chair, push it back a little bit. And it could be a cushion, it could be a little pillow. Now it allows the pelvis to slightly tilt forward. So maybe my feet flat on the floor, so just notice I have a 90 degree angle. If you're a very tall person, and your foot's on the ground and you kind of feel like you're already in a lot of hip flexion, you might want even more height under your sit bone. So if you put your, your seat a little higher, so you can kind of get more of a 90 degree angle. And then vice versa, it might be if you're on the shorter end and you feel like you're not quite in the right position, you could put something under your feet, like a yoga block or a book or a blanket. Just to see. Put your sit bones on the mat or on the sit on the blanket, hands on the thighs, I'm going to sit up tall, into the rocking chair. So the first movement, hinging at the hip crease, hands pressing gently into the thighs. As you come into your comfortable folded position where your nose might be over your knees, if you want a little more relief to your back, you can try lifting your heels. This provides a little bit of gentle traction in the lower spine. If that feels good, great. If it doesn't, you can lift the heels again. When you're ready to come up, gently press into the thigh bones with your hands as you slowly hinge up, and then the heel comes down. I'm going to tuck my chin in towards my chest here to protect the neck, lengthen the back of the neck, and I'm going to lean onto the back of the sit bones, and maybe the toes lift. So now the deep core muscles are starting to engage. It's a small movement. Think about if you were the rocking chair. As you come forward, the back of the rocker, your heels will lift. That's it. Find a range of motion that works comfortably for you. Just 
exploring that shifting of the body weight to the front of the pelvis. We come forward, coming into neutral center. And then as you lean back, there's a little bit of the toes lifting, a little core recruitment here. Okay. Here we go. One last time, your own pace here. And think of your breathing. You might start to link your breathing through our practice today. I want to guide you through that. Good. So as you come right back up to your first position. I'm sitting sideways just so you can see my, my body from the side because it might be easier to understand these movements a little bit. So cat-cow is the first movement in yoga. It was the first ever recorded um, movement. Really is the gentle articulation of your entire spine from the head to the tailbone. So go slow. I'm going to start with my hands over my knees. I don't have pressure on them, but I'm starting them here. Now I'm going to slide my hands all the way to my hips and sit up as tall as I can, maybe like I had a book on my head here, sitting up tall. Okay, so this is the extension of the spine, and then as I exhale, as my hands come forward, I'm going to let my upper back lean back. So they call this the cat stretch, because kind of my arms are stretching forward, but I'm leaning into my upper back, chin to the chest. Okay? So on the inhale, I'm going to slide the hands towards my hips, sit up tall. On the exhale, through the mouth or nose, or whatever comfortable. Let the chin come to the chest, upper back rounds, arms stretch over the knees. So again, inhale to lengthen the spine, undulating and lengthening. Sitting up tall, chest opens. Exhale, hands sliding towards the knees, chin towards your chest. Good. So try a few more. Inhale, lengthen. This time I want to send your awareness into your spine, and particularly your pelvis and the tailbone. Noticing that as you slide into the rounded position, the tailbone and the pelvis tuck under. And then as you come to your center, you have more of a neutral pelvis here. And as you come into your big extension, you might feel your pelvis tilt to the forward. Let's just try one more, and if this large range of motion, so if you've had an injury in your spine, or any sensitivity today, or you know that there's um, an issue in the spine, then you could take that movement and make it smaller. So here would be a really small range of motion, still kind of nourishing a little bit of movement, where you think of sitting tall, even just a tiny bit of pain, chin into the chest. So here's like a gentle way to get into that spinal movement, and that might be really nourishing for your body today. If that was feeling good and you wanted to explore a larger range, surely you can go further. But sometimes less is more if you're dealing with injury, pain, or it's a narrow practice for you. All right, so as you come back to center, a little shoulder roll here, maybe a little shoulder shrug. I'm going to turn back to center, and we're going to just work with some twisting action. So we do these every week. <clears throat> so let's just try and see what this looks like from the center. Okay. All right. So you have your hands on knees. Good. As you sit up tall, we'll take a breath. On your exhale, choose one hand, slide it towards your hip, and let your body turn in that direction as if you were looking over your shoulder. And on the inhale, come back to center. And on the exhale, turning the other direction. So just notice how does your body feel today? And these movements are you found action. There we go. Just notice. Okay. Double checking that you guys can hear me. Inhale to center. Exhale to turn. Try that one more time at your own pace. Inhale to center. Exhale, slowly turning. Might be moving or the head might be looking over the shoulder. Last time, inhale to center and exhale to turn. Very good. Right. So we're going to do a slightly deeper side uh, twist today. We're going to work with side bends. We're going to sort of give us our foundational spinal warm up. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one hand. You can choose whichever. I'm going to cue you to do the right side first. <clears throat> 
So I'm going to take my right fingertips to my sternum. My left hand, I'm going to take it and cross it over my right thigh. All right. So I'm going to extend my right arm out to the right. Okay. Very good. And I'm going to sit up tall. And now I'm going to start turning to the right. So I'm going to follow my arm with my head. So this will allow for a deeper movement. So just go as far as your body goes without force. Once you get there, see if you can take a breath and get the spine lengthening. And then very slowly come back around. Bring the fingertips to the sternum. Okay, good. And now we'll do a side bend. So that same side. So I'm going to take my right arm now. I'm going to reach it up in the air. Noticing sometimes the ear and the shoulder want to kind of come together. I'm just going to encourage you to let that shoulder relax into the socket. So sometimes a small bend in the elbow will allow so that the shoulder isn't sort of in tension. Think of rooting into both sit bones, sitting up as tall as you can. Big breath. And we're going to go over to the left just a bit. So reaching through the right arm, just try to keep both sit bones even on the chair. Because that right sit bone is going to want to lift. I'm encouraging you to keep it anchored into your seat. Good. Slowly come up. And bring your arm down. If your arm does not want to go overhead, if you have an injury, you could stay here or here and just see if the body continues. So the arm being overhead is optional, just knowing that some shoulders are not going to want to do that. Okay. Take that arm, the shoulder roll. All right. Okay, so we're gonna do one more twist on the other side. So left fingertips are gonna come and just place them at your chest at your sternum. And then your right arm is going to come over and just rest somewhere on the outside of your left thigh. So sitting up tall, you can extend your left arm out to the side. Okay. And then take a breath. And as you turn, let your head turn and follow your arm. Follow your hand with your eye. This will allow for your whole upper body to come into the twist. Once you get as far as you can go comfortably without force, see if you can take a breath here and lengthen the spine. And slowly coming back. Fingertips coming into the sternum. And then let's see about taking the arm up. So if your arm goes up, notice if you can let it relax into the socket a bit here. If this is not feeling good, you could have hand on the shoulder. And you could even have your arm at your side and really just focus on the torso going sideways. So there are more options than just having your arm up in the air if this is not working for you. So I'm going to root down through both sit bones and get the spine lengthening. And I'm going a tiny bit over to the right. Try to anchor that left sit bone into the seat. That's what will give you this big side stretch, helping to open up our breathing into the rib cage. Very good. Very good. Okay. And then the arm comes up and down. Very good. Now shoulder roll. So then I wanted to work with a little moving uh, practice here that will incorporate all of the ways that we had just worked the spine. So I'm going to bring my hands up in front. It's also going to stretch out some of the ligaments in the hands a little bit. So I've got my palms up. I almost feel like I'm a mime in a box here. Okay. So with the right hand, let's just start with the right hand. Just extend it out in front of you and back. So the fingers are pointing toward the ceiling. Left hand pushes forward. So there's that stretch in the hand here. Now let's take the right hand across towards the left shoulder. So adding a tiny bit of a twist. Now the left hand going across to the right. Taking both ways. Okay. Good. So now we're going to take the right hand up across to the right. Take a little side bend. Okay. Left hand reaching up across, only reaching in, in a comfortable range for your shoulder today. Just down across. There you go. Now, right hand reaching down across. So you can sort of let your upper body round a little bit. Hand up. And then the other arm, left arm reaching down across. Okay, get that little stretch into the cue off. I'm sure it's going to be a bigger stretch for the whole moment. Very good. Yeah, and then your hands can come to your lap. 
All right, so let's warm up the lower body a little bit here. So with your feet, just want you to see if you turn your foot out, just see what about that action. When you gently let your foot turn out, notice how your knee turned out, your thigh bone, and your hip joint. And then your heels neutral. And then feet turn out. And then neutral. Just see how far you can go comfortably. This is not a, a forced kind of practice. And then bring them back in. So this is a warm up for the lower body, for the heel, the ankle, the knee, the leg bone, and the hip joint. They're all moving. Let's see about going into that one more time. See what that feels like for you. That's it. Just go as comfortable, wide position as is comfortable for you. And now we're going to find a nice, comfortable, wide angle with the legs. This can look different for everybody. So slowly I'm going to kind of explore. I'm looking for sort of a Y shape with my legs. So for me, this is comfortable. For some other people, they might be less wide. They might be like this. For some people, they might be wider. And then I usually have to readjust while I'm sitting a little bit here on the edge of the blanket so I feel like I'm not sliding out of the chair. All right, so I've got my legs in a wider angle here. Very good. Yep. And the first thing we're going to do is a little side bend. So I'm going to take my right forearm, and I'm just going to see if I sit up tall and then lean over, forearm on the thigh. Now we feel stretch here. So you could just stay here and do some breathing and just doing sort of encouraging the chest to open up towards the sky. If your arm allows, you could bring your arm, your left arm out, palm facing down, and think of that arm slicing around towards your right knee. And as that happens, sometimes people feel a little opening in the chest. And then a bigger stretch on that left side. So you could try that one more time, slicing your arm around towards your right knee. The other option for the arm, and this doesn't work for all shoulders, would be to go up and over. So you're making a big letter C. Great, and when you're ready for your next position, slowly as you come up, the whole shoulder ball. Anytime you feel tension building, a little shoulder roll or the shoulder shrug. Just to encourage you to back off and be easeful in your practice. And then as you sit up tall once again, just see if you can lean over to the other side to your left forearm and here on the top. This already might feel like whew, a lot of stretch. If it does, you may come out and you just have the hand so that you can sort of monitor and adjust how much of a side bend you're getting today. You can stay here and just breathe in your side bend, or you can take your right arm out, palm facing down, and we're going to slice the arm around. As you come into your full stretch, you might encourage the chest to come open towards the ceiling, and around. Okay. Try one more of the slicing arm here, slicing the arm forward, over towards that other knee, and the chest opens. Very good. And then, of course, you could try the up and over with the arm. And your shoulder might say, no, thank you, to back on your knee. Okay, very good. Wonderful. So as your hand comes to your thigh, we'll slowly come up. Shoulder roll. One more stretch. This one's excellent for a big muscle called your QL, quadratus laborum. It's a thick muscle that attaches from the back of the pelvis to your lower rib cage. And kind of if it's tighter on one side, it can cause a lot of discomfort. So this movement can gently encourage a little stretch in that back part of the body. So I'm going to take both hands, and I'm going to gently turn to the right as far as I can go comfortably without force. So I'm facing my right leg, and then I'm going to place my, right, my hands on the thigh. So go slow. Slowly slide your hand down the leg. Just noticing, so you might be feeling some stretch in here. You might be feeling it somewhere else. And then sliding the hands back up. So try that two more times on that side of the body. So a nice little back stretch here. Only go as far as your body feels comfortable going. So if you feel sharp pain, tingling, anything of the sort, that's a really 
most important thing to be mindful of in your practice. That yoga is not about moving into a pain and emotion. A manageable sensation. It might be a bit achy, but it should never be painful. Okay, just come back to your center with your shoulder roll. Now I'm going to bring my hands up. I'm going to see if I can turn my torso to face my left leg, hands on the left thigh. And then just go slow, just go as far as it feels comfortable for you. Hands down the leg. Just letting the hands up. That's it. Letting the hands down. Shoulder rolls, just want to walk our feet back into about hip width apart. All right, so let's do a little back stretch. So if you're sitting on the edge of the chair or on your blanket and you're trying to sit up tall through your practice, you are working some of the important stabilizers in your spine. But every once in a while, it's hard to tell when I'm teaching on live on YouTube, but every once in a while when I in a group class, I'll kind of just see how as people's body starts to get tired, we start to come more into that sort of folded position or the desire is to sit back and, and sort of let the chair pop us up. When that comes to play and you're feeling your spine starting to tire and wanting to round forward, I would encourage you at that point to come into a forward child's pose instead. So it might be feet are flat on the floor, it might be your forearms that just rest on the thigh bone. Um, most people have been here before. It's a very intuitive place for people to come great when you're sitting in a chair. So you might lace your hands together here and then you might just look straight down at your feet. Now just to be aware of our neck here and the tension we might hold in the back of the neck and in the face. Just see if you can gently draw your chin towards your chest here. Just noticing what sensations come up in the neck. Just take a couple breaths here. Encourage your jaw to soften. If it's appropriate for you, you can start to very slowly draw your chin a little over towards the back shoulder, just micro tiny movements. Encourage your jaw to soften and your face to stay relaxed. And then very slowly the chin coming back to center. And then slowly the chin moving towards the other side a little bit. ready, you can bring the hands back to the thighs, pressing gently down into the thighs to come up. That's it. Shoulder rolling, shoulder shrug. So I wanted to just uh, introduce a way to warm up the shoulder joint a little bit. Uh, so for this one, just see if you can hold your, just holding your opposite elbows or your forearms or your wrists. And then just start with a little sway side to side, kind of rocking the baby here. Now everybody's different in their shoulder and their range of motion. For some people, going all the way up and down might feel fine. And if that's the case, you can do the full range. You could even keep your circles, circles smaller in the front, so there would be the same motion but kind of smaller. That might be useful if there's a limitation. Sometimes the shoulder has some limitations from old injuries. And a lot of times that is fascial restriction. But one thing to keep in mind is if there is a fascial restriction, meaning there's tight connective tissue around the shoulder, if I try to force a bigger movement, that fascia is just going to start tightening up even more. Which is why that smaller movement might be better if there's some injury or pain or restriction. Less might be more, allowing the fascia to relax a little and then start to hydrate. So see if you can go in the other direction if you haven't already. That's it. Very good. And then let your arms come back down to this position. Shake out the hands. Okay. And then take the hands out to your sides, just taking the palms to face forward. That's it. 
Very good. And so we're going to curl the fingers in and then curl the hand into the shoulder. So it could be that your hand is just touching your shoulder. Curled in. And then just see about your elbows. See about where they go comfortably. So they might only get to here comfortably. And that would be your end range. And then you might have larger wings today. They might go higher. And just see what your range of motion is letting the elbows go up and down. No force. So that might mean that one arm goes to here comfortably and one arm is here comfortably if this is the one that goes in injury. And shoulder injuries are really one of the most common injured parts of the body because your shoulder is the most movable joint in the body and it's a fairly shallow joint. Okay, so once your elbows are out to the side, either below shoulder height or shoulder height at the most, then start to do some circles. So they could be kind of large circles with the elbows. Or, again, if there's an injury, maybe keep it teeny tiny. There's great benefit in small movement. In the other direction. And start to see what is a range of motion that feels good for you today. That's right. And the last thing here, the elbows come out to the side. Now let my elbows come towards each other, chin to the chest, so that's sort of a rounding of the upper back, the feet are in there or cat pose, and then looking forward, sitting up tall, maybe the elbows point to the chair behind you, or the wall behind you. Let's try that one more time, elbows pointing towards each other, chin to chest, stretching the back body, and then gently elbows moving towards the wall behind you, opening the front body, and straight ahead. And the arms, the elbows lower down, and the arms extend. That we're going to bring the arms out to the side and stretch your shoulder blades. Maybe one arm across, big bear hug for yourself. Take a big breath. Feels comfortable here. You could hinge forward like we do in the rocking chair and maybe lift your feet up a little bit. The chin can come into the chest, a little neck stretch. And then slowly come up. Heels come down. Whichever arm's on top, we'll switch. The arms stretch out. And a big bear hug for yourself on the other side. Hinging forward, knees might lift. Chin into the chest. Wonderful. Take one more breath and come up. Ah, the arms come down, stay straight. The shoulder blades. All right. Okay, so today we're going to work a little bit with the lower body from seated. And this is going to transition us to standing. So I wanted to just address um, two important things that we can do either with a strap or a TheraBand. And if you don't have one today, um, a house coat strap works great, or a belt, or a sturdy scarf. Okay? So whatever you've got, you've got a strap or you've got a stretchy band. I'm going to use a stretchy band, but I'll show you that both work. Okay. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it underneath my foot, somewhere under the arch of the foot, holding the sides of the strap, waxing the shoulders. That's it. Good. I'm going to lean back and bring the leg up just a bit off the ground. I'm going to push down, scoop up, and in. Okay. I'm going to go down, forward, and in. This is for the knee. You can do this with a strap that does not have stretch. I'll just show you what it would look like. I'll show you what it looks like sideways too. So you have your strap under your foot. The foot's just a little bit up. You're going to push it down towards the floor, scoop it up, and bring it in. It's kind of like a backwards bicycle motion. Down, pushing through the heel, up, and in. Yeah. That's it. So with a stretchy band, you can kind of add a little more dynamic muscle engagement, but certainly you could do this with a strap as well. Okay, good. Now, the next time your leg is on the ground, okay, so your heel is on the ground, pull the toes towards you, sitting up tall. Okay, so you really want to keep flexion in that foot as much as you can. If you have challenge in flexion for whatever reason in the foot, then place your strap a little more onto the ball of the foot so that you can encourage those toes to pull back towards you. Because sometimes that uh, 
flexion in the foot is challenged. So if the foot's here, it's not going to get much of a stretch. So you really want to use your strap to help you um, flex the foot. It's going to top on the back line of connective tissue, sitting up tall, and then gently hinging forward. Just a little bit. Okay. Take a breath. Side breath to help release tension. Get your jaw to soften. And when you're ready to come up, slowly come up. Foot comes in. Very good. Switching to the other foot. So you can just put your other foot on the band of the strap. Ready? Yeah. So you can have it under the middle of the foot or under the ball of the foot, whatever's comfortable for you. If you do have challenges with flexion of the foot, like lifting the toes, you might want to put your band or your strap a little more under the ball of the foot. And then that would be something to kind of help you get into a bit of flexion of the foot. All right, so I'm going to lean back a little so I can lift the foot just a tiny bit off the floor. I'm kind of pushing down on an angle, so I'm kind of, it's almost like you're going to slam on the brakes. And then up, bend the knee and come in. So it's like a backwards bicycle. Down, forward, and up. Strengthens the hip, and it's a really nourishing movement for the knee. Good. Okay, maybe one or two more, knowing that you can leave anything out that is just not working for you today. There are 80,000, there are said to be 80,000 yoga movements, 5,000 base movements, and about 80,000 variations. So if something's not working for you, you can take a moment to relax. Or you can put your leg is out in front of you. Yeah, so the strap is just here to help you encourage that flexion in the foot, but to relax your shoulders. So just notice if you're holding too much tension in the upper body. Relax your upper body, bring your toes towards you, sitting up tall. If you'd like more of a stretch in the back of the leg, hinging forward a little bit. Ooh, there's the sensation of stretch in the back of the leg. Very good. Hamstrings are really helpful to stretch every day. Come up, slowly come up. Don't bring your foot in front of you a bit. Okay. Release your band. So we are going to start working with the stretchy bands a little bit more in our practice. Next week we're going to focus on some upper body awareness with the band. If you don't have a band or you have an active injury and you just choose not to, you can do all the movements without. This is going to add a little bit of muscular awareness and resistance. So this is optional, but we are going to do some upper body work next week. So if you're like, hmm, I want a band, um, yeah, they are, they're very easy to find. And if you're curious, you can leave a comment and I can um, give you some suggestions of where you might find one around where you are. So I'm going to focus now on getting out of the chair. The next part of our practice is standing. We are going to stay standing for the next um, 25 minutes. If at any time in this 25 minutes of practice you decide you would like to come and sit down and observe, you may do so. You don't have to stay standing. But we sit a lot, and sitting makes these hip creases really tight. And there's a really important muscle here that a lot of you have come to my in-person classes know I talk a lot about, about the iliopsoas muscle, or the psoas, spelled P-S-O-A-S. And it's a long muscle, and it's the only muscle that connects your leg to your spine. When it connects to your spine, starting at T12, so kind of under the rib cage, so it's a little finger attachment on the side of the spine. Then when it gets to the pelvis, it goes to the inside of the pelvis, through the front of the groin and the hip, and it ends in the inside of your thigh. So when you lift your leg, there's one muscle that's connecting in through the inner groin, into the pelvis, all the way up along the spine. So if it's really, really tight, it can make sitting up tall really challenging. And a whole host of discomfort can come about. So one of the best things you can do if you're sitting for long periods of time is to just stand up every, at least every 30 minutes, just taking a moment to stand up. Next week we're going to do a seated psoas stretch, but today I wanted to explore how we can stretch it from standing. So to get out of your chair, I'm going to stay at the edge of the chair. I'm going to bring my heels a little closer to the chair so that I can use them as leverage. So be sure your heels can still be on the ground. If they're too, too far back and your heels are floating, find a place where your heels are making contact with the ground. 
if you have more flexion in one foot than the other or one knee, it might be that one foot is closer to the chair and one foot's a little further in front. Sometimes in, after a knee replacement or if there's some uh, limitation in flexion of your ankle, you might not be able to get both feet raised back. So that staggered position is fine as well. But really think of your heels as the launch. They're what's going to push you out of the chair. And then the second part would be bringing your nose over your knee so that we shift our weight from the sit bones a little bit more into the feet. So you could have your hands on the side of the chair or on the edge of the seat. You can have your hands at your side. I like to reach mine forward. So I'm going to hinge forward from the hip crease, bringing my nose towards my knee. And now I can feel that there is more weight in my feet. And at that point, whether you need the hands on the chair or out in front of you, I'm going to push into the feet and then slowly come up. Once you're up, I'm going to encourage you to bend your knees just a little, sink into your feet. I have toe spacers on, so these allow my toes to space out. This helps with balance. So if your toes are getting really curled up and tight, it can challenge our sort of base, being your foot, your base of balance. If it's appropriate, you might lift your toes, spread them out, and then place them on the floor, and then straighten them out. So you feel more contact with the floor. And then we're going to come and stand at the side of your chair. So you can choose whichever side is, is working for you today. So coming to the side of your chair. If you're using a walker or you have something in front of you, you could certainly use something in front of you as well. But we are going to do some movement side to side and then front to back. So sometimes a side of the chair might be better than behind the chair. But behind the chair could work. So I'm going to come to stand at the side of my chair. Whichever side you want to start with is just fine. We are going to be behind the chair in a moment. Just know that it's there. It's just good to have it nearby. And I'm going to kind of move my chair a little more out of the way so you can see. Okay. So here we are. So first thing, I'm going to have sink down into my feet, lift the toes, spread them out, place them on the ground. And then come up. Very good. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here is take the outer leg. I'm going to shift my weight to the leg that's closest to the chair. And then I'm going to bend the standing leg, which is going to be the one closest to the chair, so that I can bring the other leg up into a 90 degree angle. So at this point, I'm going to kind of stand sideways just so you can see. Okay. So you're standing, the outer leg is in a 90 degree angle. Yeah. And see if you can take it a little to the side and down. So we're bringing the knee up, out, and down. Whatever range of motion feels good for you. So if bringing it all the way up here is feeling uncomfortable in your hip or it's just not available, if this motion is not available, what about a smaller range of motion? So work with what sensation's going on in your hip, especially if you've had any hip replacement or an injury. take a break. We might in this practice notice more of the standing leg where we're putting the weight into that standing leg. Then anytime you're on this leg and starting to give you discomfort, just take a break, shift your weight off of it, and then see if you can try again. All right. So the next movement is a little more for the hip crease. It's going to get into those psoas muscles a little bit. So I'll just show you what it looks like from the side, but you're standing here, you've got your chair to hold on to, your outer leg is going to come up wherever it's comfortable, like so. Okay. All right, so now in this position, I'm going to try to use, to move from my hip. So my leg is going to stay in a 90 degree angle, and I'm just going to try to move my knee towards the ground. And back up again. Yeah. So when the knee gets to here, we're getting into those hip flexor muscles. That's it. Very good. You can take a break at any time. We are doing a lot of standing on one leg, which is going to help with bone density. But if you're feeling your ankle, your knee, or your hip on that standing leg, take a moment to take a break. Okay. Bring your foot down. Shake it out. 
All right, so now we're gonna to try to use that as a way to go into a standing balance. So you could have your hand on the chair. Pretend my wall is the chair. I'm just showing you from the side because it's easier for you to see what's going on here. I'm gonna bring the leg up to that 90 degree angle. I might bend my standing leg a little bit. So if I'm sinking down into the roots of that standing leg, I'm gonna let the knee gently float down towards the floor. I'm gonna bend my standing leg now a little bit more. And if it's appropriate for you, I'm going to start hinging at the hip crease so that my front body comes forward. You might stretch your leg out a little bit. You might stay holding the side of the chair. You might bring your arm out. Sometimes people will practice bringing both arms out. Again, do what works for you today. Standing on one leg. Think of it. Could be even a little less angle. Could be a little lower. Bring it out to the side. Challenge, good. And as you bring the feet back together, relax, shake them out. Good. All right, so that was a strength based standing balance practice on one leg. I'm going to invite you to move to the other side of your chair. Just go mindfully to the other side of your chair or just move the chair. Just make sure you've got something to hold on to on that other side in case you need it. All right, so I move my chair to this side. Okay, stand at the side of the chair. Shift your weight to the leg that's closest to the chair. And we're going to bring the knee up, out. So if there's lots of clicking and clunking in the hip, try a smaller range of motion. And clicking and clunking isn't necessarily a dangerous thing, but it kind of highlights maybe some tightness in some of those fascial layers. Two more. Bring the leg up, bring the leg out, and down. Up, out, and down. All right, very good. Same leg. I'm going to come up into a 90 degree angle. I like to flex the heel a little bit just to sort of activate the foot. So that's a position. And imagine the motion is coming right from the hip. So my knee is going to end up ground, there's that little passive gentle stretch in the hip crease. And then as you do this, if it's comfortable, maybe the knee goes a little bit behind you and that will start to stretch that a little bit more. Be mindful of your lower back. Okay. And down towards the ground. And back. Good. All right, good. Now this time, as the knee goes down towards the ground, I'm going to bend my standing leg a little. I'm hinging at the hip crease. So I'm slowly going to hinge forward. I've got my standing leg is bent. I could stay holding onto the side of the chair. The other arm might spread out. You might stretch out the leg or keep it a little bent. And it could be even lower down towards the floor. Four, three, two, one, and come. Ooh, very good. Good, good, good. Shake out the feet. All right. Good. All right. So I wanted to do one more movement practice here that will cultivate some strength in the lower body and some balance. And for this, you might come to the back of your chair. So you might come and stand behind the chair, so you're like so. So you have something to hold on to if you need it. All right. Very good. And I'm going to move my chair so you can see me. So I'm this way. Okay. So from this position here, with your feet about hip width apart, okay, very good. I'm just going to encourage you to bend your knees a little, lift your, lift your toes, spread your toes out, place them on the ground, and then come up with your strong standing legs. Very good. Shoulder roll up, back, and down. Let's try that one more time. Okay, good. So what we're going to practice here is a little bit of a chair pose which is sort of helps us to understand the dynamics of keeping our knees safe when we're doing this, um, getting into chairs. But we're not actually going to sit down. So you've got your chair in front of you. You're going to bend your knees a tiny bit, just a bit. Hinge at the hips so that the nose comes forward, the hip comes forward, and then stick your bum out behind you. So what you'll notice is that my knee is actually over my ankle rather than being here over my toes. So it's it's a small bend in the knee, 
and then it's really about hinging at the hips. When I'm hinging at the hip crease, then I'm going to shift my weight into my sit bones. So if I'm sticking my bum way out over the chair, and then I'm going to come up. Good. Try that one more time. I'm going to move a little bit. Hinge at the hip. Shift your weight into your heels and stick your bum way out as if you were hovering over a chair. And slowly press into the heels to come up. Very good. Wonderful. Next movement is a balance exercise. So from here, bring you down to the feet. See if you can shift your weight onto the front of the foot. And then see if you can allow the heels to rest. Okay. Let's just try that two more times. Slowly shift your weight forward. Let the heels float up wherever they go comfortably. And then slowly come down. Try it one more time. And go as far as you feel comfortable. Your hands could be on the front of your chair the whole time. Come down. Good. Okay. Wonderful. And then the last movement, and we're going to put them all together. Last movement from feet hip width apart. Sometimes people's feet are a little too close. And so experiment with what your hip width is. A slightly wider base might feel a little bit better in these series of movements. So with a little baby bend in the knees so I can sink into my feet, I'm going to shift my weight over to one leg. So I can slowly extend the other leg out to the side, slowly. Shift the weight to the other foot. Slowly the leg extends. That's it. So let's try that one more time. Shifting to the center. Slowly lifting the leg wherever it goes comfortably for you. This is a one for strengthening the outer hip and the outer thigh. So if we put that all together, we can do a nice little moving sequence. And so you could start pretend your you pretend I have a chair here and put my hands on the chair. And I'm going to bend the knees, and hinge forward, stick my bum back. So this is our first movement, which is the chair pose. Press into the heels to come up to standing. Press down to the heels, lengthen through the spine, shifting the weight forward, lifting up onto the heels or onto the front of the foot, heels lift. Heels come down, shift your weight to one foot, extend the leg out, shift your weight to the other foot, and extend the other leg out. So that's our movement. Let's try it two more times. Small bend in the knee, hinging at the hips, stick your bum way back behind you, there's your chair pose. Press into the heels to slowly come up to your center. Shoulders back, shifting the weight forward, let the heels float up, slowly floating down, take your own pace, shift your weight to one foot, extend the leg, you can bend your knees a little as you shift the weight to the other leg, extend the leg. That's it. Let's try it one more time. As you come back, both feet flat on the floor, bend the knees, hinge at the hip. Your bum behind you. Think of this as your chair pose. Press into the heels to come up to standing. Shift your weight forward. Lift the heels. Heels come down. Weight shifts over. Leg slowly extends. Bend the knees. Shift over to the other side. Leg extends. Good. Feel free to take a break. We'll try it. One last time. Okay, feet flat, bend the knees, hinge at the hip, stick your bum way back behind you. The weight's in your heels here. Press into the heels to come up. Once you feel stable, roll the shoulders back, shift weight forward, lift the heels. Heels slowly come down, shift your weight to one foot. Shift your weight to the other leg. Leg extends. Hey, very good. Okay. Now, pretty good. Shake out your feet. Lovely. How are you for time? Here we go. Five minutes. So let's take a moment. We're going to do our lymphatic movement. Um, I love this. This, if you've ever practiced with me in person, you know I, I love this movement. 
as a way to really enliven the body, it helps the um, lymphatic system get a little bit of movement. Um, so we'll see how it feels for you. I like my feet slightly wider than my hips. I'm going to turn my feet a little bit out. Just a little. It's going to externally rotate the hip. You should feel comfortable and you should feel like you have good stability. A nice tiny little spring in the knees. And I'm going to invite you to start with some circles. So if you had a shoulder that didn't like a lot of large movements, you could keep your circle really small. We're essentially using centrifugal force here to start stirring up the fluids. Of course, we're also moving the shoulder joint. So your shoulder joint might not want big movements, so you can do this, and you're still getting those fluids moving in the upper body. If you're feeling really comfortable this morning, you might do some larger motions here, take some big breaths. Just noticing how quickly the body starts to get tired or the mind starts to get bored. <laughs> Some other thoughts. One or two more. Noticing the sensation in the arms, maybe in the fingertips, the energy whooshing about. And then we'll try the other direction. Yeah. So again, you could keep them really small. So you could stay little like this. That might be better for your shoulder. But for me, the shoulder feels good to do a bigger motion, so I will, but know that that's not required here. Whatever circular range of motion is manageable and comfortable. Your arms at this point, probably you're pretty tired, so am I. Very good. And let the arms come down to swing. I'm going to turn my feet forward. Bring my arms up. Watch out for anything behind you because we're going to let our arms swing. I don't want you to hit anything behind you or in front of you. So the knees are a bit bent. Arms come up and whew, you're shaking off any bad energy off your hands, off your fingertips. One more. Okay. And this is the arms just swing at your sides. Feet are pointing forward. And this is called a palm tree twist. So it's a really easy, gentle movement. The opposing heel might lift. Think of your arms as if they were heavy, wet noodles. And you're just kind of tapping them on the body. You kind of tap around the body. Slow movement. And then as you slowly come to a still point, if it's comfortable for you, this is a challenge for our balance. If it does not feel good and you have vertigo or get dizzy when you close your eyes, please keep your eyes open. But if you're curious and you feel you can close your eyes, take a moment to close your eyes and take that awareness so I'm going to the inner sensations. From that movement, you might feel little enlivened tissues in the body. And then when you're ready, as you open your eyes, just thought we could just finish with um, one more little stretch of seated. So this will take us to the end of our practice. And you might come around mindfully to the to the chair. Come back to your seat. I wanted to just take a moment to finish our time together um, with that little discussion we had about deep breathing from earlier. Take a moment. Okay. Shoulder rolls. Okay. And then the shoulder shrug. Okay. Okay. So these last few side breaths, if it's comfortable for you, you might close your eyes here. Go back to that breathing we started with today, that mindful breath awareness. So as you breathe in your nose, see if you can just allow the inner body to expand. Wherever you feel it, could be the belly, could be the ribs, could be the upper chest, could be all three. So if you thought of yourself as a container, maybe you could pull yourself from the bottom up, filling the belly, ribs, and the chest. So it looked like you're creating inner space in the body as you breathe in. And when you exhale, surrendering and encouraging the body to soften. 
Try that two more times at your own pace. Keep breath in, expanding the inner body. And your breath out, letting the inner body relax. Encourage your face to soften. These last few breaths here are going to read you a short poem that um, is really inspired by Dana Gold, who is a yoga teacher, and she is a, um, an amazing poet. So she wrote this poem called The Breath. And I will link this or type it in the, um, the notes after the class. So this one's called Breath. Place your hands on your chest and just notice your breath. You might just have your hands resting on your lap here. Breath, the mindful breath, the rhythm out and in, the wave that washes through our days, creating space for stillness, sorrow, joy, or exaltation. Full, then empty, ebb and flow. Breath accompanies each step into the unknown. In the breath, the soul finds an opportunity to speak. Images or intuition, poetry or wordless wisdom come and go. No effort but to breathe. invite a deeper breath here. Sometimes taking a breath in and inviting a smile will allow the muscles of the face to awaken. Some shoulder rolls. So I thank you so much for your practice today. We're kind of slowly increasing our breath awareness. And passive breath awareness is just simply watching your breath with the intention of creating space as you breathe in and of sort of softening and letting go as you breathe out. And over time, we can really change our awareness to our breath and the way we can use our breath in our practice. But always is an intention to be gentle and mindful and kind to yourself as you breathe in your practice, as with your own it's your physical practice too. So I thank you so much for your time this morning. Whenever you've decided to practice, the recordings will be up on the um, on my YouTube channel. So you can always go back and fast forward through areas that you didn't want to review or just pick some of the areas that you found really helpful for yourself. And if you have questions, you can leave them in comments. And I thank you for your practice, and I hope to see you next, uh, next Sunday for another practice. We are going to use more stretchy bands, so if you don't have one, maybe this week you go out and look for one. They're really easy to find if you just Google it because they come up everywhere. But I'm happy to offer you some suggestions here around town if you're in Victoria or if you find them. So thank you so much for your practice today. Wish you a wonderful day. Namaste. I'll say goodbye since I end the stream. <laughs>